And we have something very special for everyone right now. Academy Award winning actor Gina Davis has been turning heads on the silver screen for decades. She won her Best Supporting Oscar for her work in The Accidental Tourist in 1989 and, of course, has a huge list of acting credits to her name, including her work alongside Susan Sarandon in the classic movie hit Thelma and Louise. I'll have a wild turkey straight up and a coke back, please. Thelma? Oh, what? Tell me something. Is this my vacation or isn't it? Did you see his butt? <laughs> Thelma, have you lost your mind? Woo! I'm uh, Investigator Hal Slocum, Arkansas State Police. You get your butt back here, Thelma, now. As you know, we've tapped your phone. What? Maybe you got a few too many parking tickets? <sighs> Thelma, what happened? <laughs> you're getting in deeper every moment you're gone. Well, now the star is using her power for a great cause with her Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media, campaigning for gender equality in the entertainment industry. The one and only Gina Davis joins us now live from Los Angeles, and it is great to have you on the show, Gina. Oh, thank you. Great to be here. Thank you. Now, we know your face so well from the silver screen, but what some people might not know is about your incredible advocacy and brilliant work for the balance of gender in media. What initially motivated you to create this institute of yours and how did you feel when it first started to gain traction? Right. Well, actually, it was my daughter. When she was a, a, a toddler, I started watching you know, little pre preschool shows and things for little kids with her. And I immediately noticed that there seemed to be far more male characters than female characters. And I thought, well, surely in the 21st century, we, we shouldn't be showing kids this uh, imbalanced world still. So uh, I decided that I wanted to get the data about it so that I could go directly to creators of kids media and share the data with them and maybe that would have an impact. So um, it turned out that I actually had a pretty good idea because uh, everyone that we presented the research to was shocked. They had no idea they were actually leaving out that many female characters. And we've seen tremendous uh, improvement since then, so I'm very excited about that. The, the Institute provides so many resources. Um, with the, the website alone is like a one-stop shop uh, for gender diversity. Uh, what did you put the spotlight on uh, at, at the event that you held this afternoon? Right. Well, uh, we were we were uh, presenting information about our latest study about uh, it's sort of an update on our television research. And uh, we found uh, some great news is we've reached parity in male and female characters for the secondary and minor characters. In 2016, women and girls were just 37 percent of the sort of population of the movie. But uh, by 2020, women and girls had jumped to 52 percent. So uh, we're very excited about that uh, we found that their screen time increased by eight eight point four percent for race people of color are 38 percent of our population and in 2020 40 percent of the supporting characters were uh, people of color so um, we've made a, a, some tremendous progress you have That's indeed yeah. uh, and it's partly because you were able to prove and show so clearly mm. where the problem lay, just yep. how unfair it was. You even got Lego to remove gender bias from toys following a recent study from your institute. What did you discover there? Well, uh, Lego asked us to, to help them out and do a, a study for them, and we surveyed nearly 7,000 parents of children 6 to 12 and uh, found that, uh, you know, girls are much more... Uh, uh, able to believe that that uh, boys and girls can do anything. In, in other words, 82% of girls said that they thought that girls could play football and boys can play basketball, uh, play ballet, uh, do ballet. And uh, uh, boys were a little less likely to see. They were more likely to say that there were some things that were only for girls. But... Um, but we found that, you know, that that uh, kids on their own are making making some progress and uh, we have to assume that their parents are helping them with that. Yeah. 
Gina, um, in 2004 you started the Institute because you saw the imbalance, which is just incredible that you would start a, an Institute to create, the, to, to collect the data. Um, what can we all do as individuals to help play a part in creating a diverse landscape, not, not only in media, but in every aspect of our lives? Well, I think what we have to keep in mind is that uh, so much of... Um, uh, uh, you know, th this is, is unconscious bias, you know, that we don't realize that we have a bias against girls, but we were all raised to have it. And partly because of the media that we've consumed has been so weighted toward uh, male characters and men's stories. So um, so we need to keep that in mind. And, and a tip that I give parents, which is what I did myself with my kids when they were little, is when you watch with them, you can be their media literacy teacher. In other words, you can say, hey, in that scene just then, did you notice there were only boys? Or do you think that girls could do what those boys are doing? And, and those kinds of things. And it really makes them realize, you know, that, that they shouldn't just absorb what they're seeing uh, and take it uh, as the truth. You can point out that, you know, boys and girls are equal, they share the sandbox equally, and they do equally interesting and important things. It's so true. Mm. We, we're in mm -hmm. awe of mm -hmm. your stellar list of movie credits, of course, but one that stands out for so many people is, of course, Thelma and Louise, which is celebrating its 30th anniversary this year. Did you? And co-star Susan Sarandon uh, know you were on to something special when you were making that film? No, we didn't. We knew that it was unusual that it, it had two female lead characters and that it was a very well-written script, but nothing about it stood out to any of us. Nobody thought, oh, this is really going to, you know, strike a nerve. <laughs> and so we were shocked when it did. You know, Susan and I were like on the cover of Time magazine a couple of weeks later, and it was, it was very um, uh, amazing and, and, uh, and interesting. We, we didn't know we were going to be part of a cultural landmark, you know, but, uh, but it's really um, stood the test of time, I think. And, and still, obviously, we always get people talking to us about what the, what the movie made, meant to them. Was that the first ever selfie, that, that Polaroid that you two took in the movie? Yes, Susan invented the selfie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Gina, talking, talking about uh, empowered women, Susan Sarandon, can you, can you tell us a story about when you both sat down with the script uh, and was it with the director or the producer, or the, the, the script writers, and you wanted to make some changes to the script but you weren't too sure how to do it and then you met Susan? Yes, yes. So I had never met her and we were going to sit down with the director, Ridley Scott, and just, you know, mention if we had any thoughts about maybe a little line change or something we wanted to to uh, to make. And so I had planned out the girliest possible ways to do this. Like this one, I'm going to make him think it's a joke, but then maybe he'll take it seriously and, you know, that kind of thing. And so we get there and I'm immediately struck by how self-possessed Susan is, you know, mm. um, and we sit down and I swear that uh, on the first page, she said, you know what, I think, I don't really think we need this first line of mine. I think we should just cut it. And I was <laughs> literally like, oh, what? You can, Wait, what? <laughs> Women can be like this? Like you can, you're allowed to do that? You can do that? <laughs> you're allowed to say what you think? And I mean, I don't know how I got to my 30s where I'd never met a woman like that or seen an example of a woman just saying what she thinks without saying, I don't know what you think, I don't think it'd be possible, but, well, this is probably stupid, but, you know, and uh, so I, I got a three-month education in, in uh, how to be like her and, and uh, trying to learn from how she was, and uh, she's, it's, uh, she's my very good friend still and uh, such a valuable friend to me. That is Fantastic. a beautiful story. We look at the success of Thelma and Louise, which you say had two female leads. Of course, a league of their own, another hugely successful mm. movie. Yet we still see in the best Oscar picture nomination list, really dominated by movies that are all starring or about men. Like the other year it was, it was Dunkirk mm. and Ford versus Ferrari. And I think it was really only Little Women that actually had any main women's parts in it. Are enough movies starring and about women being greenlit or is there still a way to go with that one? 
No, there, there's definitely still uh, still a way to go. Um, unfortunately, you know, when, when Thumb and Louise came out, the press was predicting, well, this is going to change everything. Now everything's going to be completely different. And unfortunately, that uh, that didn't happen. But I will tell you uh, that for in movies made for kids, uh, we have achieved parity in the lead characters. And when we started out, only 11% of lead characters in kids' movies were females. So we're now at 50-50, and uh, we're pretty thrilled with that. That is such amazing it's work. so incredible. That is great. Gina, did you feel like the longest time the work of the Institute and, and the research that was being done were, was a slow burn and it was, you know, you, 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 were, you were battling up uphill to get the traction, whereas in, in recent years, with the reckoning that's gone on worldwide, um, there, there is such a demand for the data that's been sitting in front of the world all along with your Institute? Well, uh, no, you know, we, we got very strong reactions from the very first meeting we ever took uh, because they had no idea that they were not doing right by kids. You know, p people who make kids entertainment love kids and they want to, you know, do, do well by them, but, but they really didn't know that they were leaving out female characters. So we started to see change. Uh, Pretty immediately, but you know, of course, it's taken time to saturate the industry and make sure that we've spoken to everyone and, and uh, you know, done our best to impact everybody. So, so um, uh, you know, I, I feel like 15 years isn't really that long to see some uh, some very dramatic change happen in the industry. So I'm, I'm happy about no, that. No, it's quick. Yeah. That's right. It's incredibly quick. Um, just quickly, in 1989, you won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for The Accidental Tourist. What goes through your mind on a night like that just before they read out your name? Oh, well, I'll tell you, I was home uh, getting ready. You know, I have to get in an evening gown at two in the afternoon or something. And uh, I was watching TV and it was the Oprah Winfrey show and she had uh, new movie critics on there predicting who was going to win. And when I turned on it, they were just at the supporting actress category. And they went through each of us and I was last. And they said, but the only one, all of them were like, but the only one who definitely won't win is Gina Davis. And I was like, oh, oh, I didn't know. I didn't realize. Okay. So, so I sort of felt like, well, I don't have to worry about that now anyway. And so then, uh, That's awful. And then when I, when I did win, I was so Shocking, you know, it was really amazing. Oh, what a great story! I love that though. story. Uh, I've loved, I've loved all of the stories, and thank you so much for for sharing a, a little snippet of your life with us here on Studio Ten. Um, for more information on the Gina Davis Institute on Gender and Media, head to to cjane.org. Gina hey. Davis, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for all your incredible work. Thanks very much. Thank you.